Hey, I'm Natalia from nataliaray.com and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how to do WordPress domain setup, meaning exactly how to connect your domain into your WordPress website or blog and only doing this in three simple steps. Okay, before we begin, you should know that there are actually two different types of WordPresses out there. I know it can get confusing and I have an entire video explaining the differences, but overall WordPress.com is a paid solution, much like Wix.com or Squarespace.com where you buy an entire umbrella of services including hosting, domain, and everything like that. This video is not about that. This video is actually about WordPress.org, which is the free version of WordPress, which is the most popular one as well, where you choose your host and you have full control over your website. That's what this video is about. Let's begin. So step number one is to find the name servers of your host. And I'm gonna explain exactly what that means in a second, but also know that if you don't have a host yet, don't worry, just keep watching. I'm gonna hook you up with the best host, so don't worry about that. But before we're gonna be able to find the name servers for our host, I want you to understand exactly what they are, right? There is nothing worse than having your most important asset, in this case, your website or blog, and not knowing the most basic things about it, including your name servers. So here's what they are. Let's say that this attractive pink haired gentleman is you and you type in a domain inside your browser and you want to arrive at a certain website. The question is how did these two things talk to each other and connect to each other? The answer is with a system called domain name system. And this system actually lives within the settings of your domain, meaning wherever it is that you bought your domain, your domain name system will live inside that dashboard, inside that interface. And essentially what it does is it connects between your domain and your website host by acting kind of like a Google map, right? So you type in your domain and your system will check, hmm, let's see this domain, what kind of records do I have about that? And what the system will be looking for is for something called name servers. And once it will find the name servers and it will find your domain and will find that they are connected, it will know to immediately redirect every single person that types in your domain into the correct place, into the correct IP address into your website. So that's what name servers servers are. So what we want to do in this video is to actually locate the name servers of your host and to put them inside the DNS, right? That's the only thing that we need to do in order for this to work. So let's see exactly how you go about this. So in order to find your um, name servers, what you want to do is you want to hit Google and I'm going to show you exactly how I do this live in a second. And you want to type in your host name and then the word name servers. So for example, um, the host that I'm using and that I recommend to all of my clients is called SiteGround. So for the sake of example, SiteGround has domain name servers that look like this, ns1.siteground.net and ns2.siteground.net. You will always have two of them. So let me show you exactly how I look them up live. So I'm going to go to google.com and I'm simply going to type in site ground name servers, name servers, hit enter. I'm going to scroll a little bit down and already you can see that my name servers are here, NS1 and NS2. Let's get another example. Let's say that your host is Bluehost for some reason. And again, you will see that you have the name service pop in right here at the top. It doesn't need to be complicated. Simply locate these two name servers and keep them at a safe place because we're going to need them for step number two. Let's move on to step number two. Okay, step number two is to update those name servers within your domain's DNS, right? And in order to do that, you're gonna have to log in into the system where you bought your domain name from. It doesn't matter if it's Namechip, like the example that I'm gonna give you in a second. If you bought it from GoDaddy, from domain.com, it really, really doesn't matter. All of those systems are built in a very, very similar structure. So let me show you an example of how I update my name servers within my Namechip. DNS. So right now I'm inside my Namechip website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over account and click on dashboard in order to go to behind the scenes where I have all of my settings. And right here under um, my dashboard, I have my domain here and I want to update its name server. So what I want to do is I want to go to the settings were of my domain, right? And it looks different in every single system. In the case of Namechip, all I have to do is click on manage, manage domain. And then I'm going to scroll a little bit down to the place where it says name servers, right? And what you want to always check is to make sure that you choose custom DNS. And again, it's the same for every single domain company. It just looks slightly differently, but most chances are that the naming is similar, right? So you always want to choose custom DNS and then you will update your name servers right here. Again, you will always have two lines. So just make sure that you update them correctly. So if you're going to see if I'm just going to change them one second, you're going to do that. And then you're going to click the check mark 
to hit save. I'm not gonna do that right now because my name servers are already updated, but make sure it's done and let's move on to the next step. Okay, step number three in connecting your domain to your WordPress website or blog is probably the hardest because this is the one where you actually have to wait anywhere between 24 to 72 hours for the changes that you made to take effect. And you actually have a free website where you can check how things are going. What I want you to do is I want you to go to dnsleaf.com. The website looks kind of like this. And what you want to do is you want to type in your domain. In this case, I'm just going to type in sidegrind.com, which is the, main, the name of my host to just show you an example. And as you can see, I'm looking for the green check marks for everything to be green and for my name servers to be updated correctly. So in this case, it's going to be NS1 and NS2. And as you can see, it already appears here in SiteGround. In most chances, it will appear the same for the parent uh, name service as well as for the local name service, but just make sure that it actually is the case for you. And if you have any kind of problems, if something doesn't get updated in time, if 72 hours have already passed and you see that your domain is not live or not updated yet, you have to contact your host support system, right? right? And that's why I preach again and again how important it is to actually choose the right host because inevitably you will have a lot of problems, a lot of technical problems along the way, hopefully as your business grows, as your website grows, and you really want a powerful technical team standing behind you, willing to support you with anything that you need. And that's why I recommend SiteGround. Their support is amazing. It takes you like one second to get online with a real human being and ask them real questions and for them to solve issues for you. So that's just my two cents about choosing a host. And last but not least, once your DNS is updated, once 24 to 72 hours have passed, you will be able to now install WordPress. It only takes one click with SiteGround and then your website will be live. So I hope this WordPress domain setup has been helpful. I hope you understood exactly how to connect your domain into your WordPress website or blog. If you have any questions for me, please hit them in the comments below. I'm going to see you in the next video. Until then, yalla bye.